Ladies and gentlemen, this is the encourager here with you with um, just another quick study or perhaps I should just say Bible reading. I am in the book of Luke tonight and um, as usual, I'm here to encourage you to get in the Bible, to get in the instruction manual. It is your instruction manual, the Bible. Therein lies all the necessary instructions you need for this life. And it speaks of the life to come. Any and everything that you encounter, this is the book that you need. This is the manual that you need that will help you navigate this journey, which is your life, your journey. So let's read um, Luke chapter 21. And it starts, And he looked up and saw the rich men casting their gifts into the treasury. And he saw also a certain poor widow casting in thither two mites. This is Jesus looking on, and he is going to speak now. And he said, Of a truth, I say unto you that this poor widow has cast in more than they all. For all these have of their abundance cast in unto the offerings of God, but she of her penury has cast in all the living that she had. And as some spake of the temple, how it was adorned with goodly stones and gifts, he said, As for these things which you behold, the days will come in which there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And they ask him, saying, Master, but when shall these things be? And what sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? And he said, Take heed that you are not deceived. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And the time draws near go ye not therefore after them but when you shall hear of wars and commotions be not terrified for these things must first come to pass but the end is not yet then said he unto them nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and great earthquakes shall be in divers places, and famines, and pestilences, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. That's verse 11. So I'm just going to pause there just a bit, um, just to comment. So, this is where Jesus is observing and he is speaking and he is warning. It is up to us to take heed. I find that many times when we read the Bible, we take it out of context at times. We want to and we do, which we ought not to do, um, say we are interpreting the Bible. The Bible interprets itself. The Bible is clear. And if for some reason you're reading it and it is not clear to you, as I've said on this channel and in, in previous posts, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he is the revealer. All you have to do is if you're reading and you 
it's not coming through to you, go to him. Ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes. Open your eyes so you can clearly see. Open your heart to understand what is written. I find that many are reading and they are reading the Bible, not realizing that they are taking it as a history book. Yes, there are historical facts laid out in here. But the Bible is also current. And many are saying, well, this is what God is saying. Be careful when you do that. Be careful. If God has not spoken to you, do not allow your emotions to come into play. Many are making that mistake today. They are reading the Bible, um, let me just say, by way of emotions. God's not emotional like that. He gives wisdom and he gives clarity. He's a God of order. So here, um, in verses 1, Jesus is looking on and he's seeing the wealthy, he's seeing the rich, the well-to-do, those that have. And um, I kind of look at these as the Pharisees. They show, they look at what I have and look at what we're donating. I do believe we need to have a spirit of humility. And Jesus is looking on and he is teaching. This is documented here for our edification. Right? And the old lady, whatever she had, all she had, she put it in the basket. And in the natural, when you and I look at that, we will look at we will look at that and say, those that had, as in those that are rich, they gave more. But you'll see how Jesus looks at it. He's not looking at it through the carnal mind. What are we doing and what are we giving back to God today? That is a question I'd like to pose to you. What are you giving back? Are you giving all? Or do you think that you have nothing to give because you're looking at the carnal man and looking at what you can give, let's say, um, from a financial standpoint? We all have gifts. We may not have the dollar signs behind our names, but you have a gift or gifts. And perhaps you have not realized what your gifts or gifting or talents are. And this is something you can take to the Lord and he will show you. Is it being kind to somebody else? Is it taking care of your neighbor? Is it just giving off your time or giving encouraging words? There is so many things that we can give. But many times we are looking to give material things rather than looking at yourself to see what your gifts and talents are and how can you contribute to the kingdom of God. So I do trust that you will take the time and literally go over this scripture Um. It is um, Luke 21, and I'm going to continue. And you'll see up at verses, starting in verse 8 through to verse 11, Jesus is speaking and he's reminding and or advising of the deceivers and that what is to come upon the world, wars and disasters. And he is showing us how we ought to be 
in this period of time. He said, he's saying, don't worry. These things must happen. Don't stress over it. Understand the season. Many are going to come in his name. Many are going to say, Lord, 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 Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. But it is up to you to try the spirits and see. You are going to hear of wars and rumors of wars and commotions. There's so many words that can be used for that. And we are hearing that. And we've been hearing that for a while now. But you've perhaps you've noticed, and I hope that you've noticed over the last year and a half or almost two years, the, it has intensified. And I'd like you to pay special attention to verse 11, which I'm going to read again. And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places. I mean, this we know and famines, and pestilences. I think a lot of times people don't realize what pestilences are. Some words are just like they, they register immediately to us. And then there are other words we don't take time. Pestilence. Is there a pestilence happening now? Yes, there is. And there are more than one pestilences that are up on the face of the earth as I speak. And further down, it says here, and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from the heaven. When it, in this instance, when it speaks of heaven, it is speaking of the sky, things that you're going to see. And it could also speak of the atmosphere. It could also speak of weather patterns. It could also speak of that. Bearing in mind, we are reading the Bible in the English language, and this was translated that the most powerful creator, he gives us understanding. He gives us understanding. So when you read, pay special attention to the words, please. And if there's something, if you need to, I mean, you need to study actually. If you come upon a word and you are struggling with it, just grab your dictionary, dissect the word. We don't want to be left behind. We don't want to be lost because of ignorance. And therefore it is up to us to seek the Lord and say, Lord, I don't want to be lost because of ignorance. So take the time to study. To study, I, I'm not sure how many ways I can tell you, but I am a living, walking testimony of reading this book and saying, okay, Lord Jesus, okay, Holy Spirit, I am um, just not getting this. And I know, and I declare that, and I know that Jesus Christ is the one that reveals. And I say, Lord, please help me to understand reveal it to me. I may put the book down for a bit or I may start over again. And it's amazing how my on how my eyes just pop open and I clearly see what the Lord is saying. And I have no doubt. I clear it's it like this is an experience that you will have to have for yourself. So I could explain to you what I experience, but it is not the same until you get your feet in. And because the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he's there for you. He's not just for me. He's, he has no limit. He's limitless. He said, come to me. Don't be afraid. Don't feel that you're asking too much. Okay? So I I just wanted to come tonight to encourage you to get in the word. Get in the word. Do not be deceived when you hear of wars and rumors 
of wars. Be prepared. Be prepared. And this is a warning I am giving to you. Be prepared. Especially when I got to verse 11. Yes, you're seeing earthquakes in different places right now. And there is famine. There are people that don't have food or cannot afford food. People that are losing their job. Of course, it is not global yet. Emphasis is placed on the word yet. But these things are coming. So I encourage you to prepare. Yes, we cannot store up for years. But little is much when you give it to the master. So if you can afford, I don't know, a bag of flour, a bag of sugar, rice, salt. If you can afford the bit, like don't look at what you cannot do. Look at what you can do. The Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth is not a magician. And I'm going to reference the parable regarding the ten virgins. Five were wise, five were foolish. There's so many things that can be taken from that particular scripture. They were prepared spiritually, but they were also prepared physically. One good practice and one thing that I specifically ask the Lord for continually, and I've been doing this for years, is wisdom. It's a good it's a good thing to have godly wisdom. The Lord says, ask me anything, come to me with anything. Many times we go to him and we are looking for the um let's say the practical things like a house, a car, and we go to him with those things. He said anything, guys. I literally take anything to him. I'm going to the store. Let your wisdom be pushed forth in me so that I am able to buy the things that I need to buy and not go over budget. You know what the budget is, Lord. I don't know what the budget is. I'm just going for the things that I need. Help me not to be frivolous. I'm going to the grocery store and I literally do that. And I walk out and I'm amazed with the things that I walk out with. I walk in and... There is a particular item there. Like the last time I did this, I got some grapes and I made jam. And I was like, wow. The Lord is working. You need to activate. I want to say him. That perhaps sounds weird. But you need to go to him with what you need and you desire. And it's not just the carnal things, you need to get yourself set up with them in the spiritual. You need to ask him for the spiritual things that are dormant in your life. And you'll see everything else come together. So I do trust these few words are encouraging to you, the very least that you will pick up the instruction manual and you'll get into the Bible and or go over um, Luke 21. I stopped at verse 11. I'm going to do a part two to this video because I do believe this particular um, chapter is relevant to our day and age. So be encouraged and study along with me. Get in the word. Look to the revealer, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and he will make all things known to you. Be blessed.